Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. And three. Welcome back, everybody, to the Summit Four. I'm God's joining the studio by a new guest, Lyrical. Welcome to sunny Los Angeles. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. It's beautiful here. Absolutely gorgeous outside. Good. Excited to cast some Dota. Good. Well, for those of you who don't know, Lyrical will be bringing you today's action here for Secret vs. Empire. He's joined us here at the Beyond the Summit studio. He'll be helping out with the coverage also this weekend for the Frankfurt Mages. But right now, we've got Secret vs. Empire. These teams, Secret yet to play a match. Empire had to go through the first round in the bracket uh, where they came through the round of 12. They kind of seem to be back in form after a bit of a struggle, but we're going to hop right into the draft. We've got it unraveling here, and it is Empire playing on the Radiant side. Team Dire, teams being played by Secret, and game one of our best of three. Absolutely excited for this one. Already seeing a Doom first pick, Venno and Naga as well. You know, you mentioned there as well that they're in a little bit of a rough form earlier. I was looking through some of the stats, and they've been playing a heck of a lot of heroes. Uh, no player on Empire has played a hero more than twice in this new patch. They've consistently been trying out new lineups, and excited to see what they're going to bring to the, the sort of game today. Uh, also saw that Meepo ban out there. A little bit of a respect one there from Mr. Weeha as well. Yeah, and the thing that to me really strikes me with Empire is not, they've been trying different things with their strategies, and they've also finally solidified their roster. They've got Yoku back on the team, they brought in No Fear, who's captaining and drafting, and it seems the ship is once again afloat and smooth sailing for now. They cruised through and won the first open qualifier for Europe to get into the Major, so we'll be seeing Empire play this weekend. And they seem to be just in good form in general. A team who, at their best, has been a Tier 1 top European team who could beat Team Secret. Whether or not that's going to be the Empire that shows up today, we'll have to wait and see. And it's going to be really curious. Um, I think a Night Stalker Doom opening is definitely a, a strong one. You've got a heck of a lot of regeneration. you got the ability to dive under towers, just completely and totally mess up whatever lane they're in. And, uh, you know, we have seen Doom played in the safe lane occasionally, but I feel like an offlane Doom here would be pretty strong. Yeah, uh, depends. Yeah, very much how they want to run the Night Stalker. I think we've seen teams do Night Stalker in the offlane as well as in that four position support. So the Doom kind of li more limited, doesn't play as that support role, but can be played as either a core in the safe lane or the offlane. It seems most teams are preferring the offlane option, but Empire team who, I mean, you go way back when they had Mag, they love to pick up this Doom. So probably happy to see this once again in the metagame. I like Empire's ban on the Alchemist. Uh, Secret, especially with the synergy with the Venomancer, such a good hero to give the Ags upgrade to. I, for when I first saw the Venom pick, I was like, oh, here we go, Secret's going Venom out. <laughs> and then they picked Naga, so I'm like, oh, okay, they're not going out yet. And Empire makes sure that it stays that way by banning it out. Yeah, certainly. You don't want to be able to give away those free things. I mean, Alchemist obviously just able to farm up that gold so quickly. And I think that it is a little bit interesting to see this this first pick coming out from Secret being the Venomancer. You mentioned there the, the combination with the Alchemist. Also now with the Naga Siren as well, they've got a whole heck of a lot of teamfight potential. Being able to, you know, disengage from teamfights or pick the ones that they want or track away those sort of running away in fear heroes when you end up catching them with that ulti. And I think that, you know, when you take a look at Empire's draft as well, there's sort of more of a, a pick off -y type thing. Obviously, Doom, a great ability in a team fight, being able to just shut down that one hero. And also, Night Stalker, if they take those team fights that they want. I, I feel like there's a good possibility here that Empire is going to be able to take the team fights that they want and uh, really shut down one of those core heroes. And we'll see how uh, Secret's going to be able to deal with that one. Yeah, it feels like they need that pickoff because otherwise you put these lineups like in a pit together in a small confined space and that's where the song Venualty is going to reign supreme. So Doom needs to take someone out before a fight begins with that ultimate unless Empire are going to now move into a third and fourth pick which can kind of more solidify their team fight. 
capabilities, but we'll have to wait and see. Empire always. Okay, yeah, that's it. I always look at the Shadow Fiend for resolution or Yoku when they're playing on that Radiant side, but that was banned out in the first stage, so no Shadow Fiend this time around. And Secret, kind of like Empire, leave their draft very open with Naga and Venomancer, because two heroes that can be played on a core role as well as a support role. We've seen more of the Venom support from Secret, but there's been teams like Monkey Business who've run No-Tell on the mid Venomancer a lot, so... Definitely flexible picks as far as where they can lane. Envy, Jackie Mao loves to play the Naga Siren if he thinks it can fit into the draft as a core hero carry as well, as opposed to the support Naga. Yeah, and this time around, we're going to be seeing the Tusk picked up as well. I, I think that, you know, considering the Clockwork's already been banned out there, another really solid offlane hero. You do see him played in the support role occasionally, but I feel like here, considering that we've got the Doom and the Night Stalker, there's already a good potential there to, you know, shut down heroes, get up in their face, and, and just, you know, walrus punch them away, get the, the ability to lock down one hero. And I feel like Tusk, in terms of his ability to burst somebody down in a team fight, is really great for that. Also, just create a little bit of havoc in the early game uh, which is going to be important when you've got the Night Stalker running around it around that minute four or you know the second phase of the night time as well it's really great and it's another the snowball as well being able to save somebody and keep them at least a little bit longer away from that duration of the doom it's not like as great as sort of you know a, a shadow demon coming in but it's pretty solid and while you do end up just getting up in the face again of the doom if you do end up trying to bring somebody away from the the doom a little bit longer it's, I don't know, it's a little bit tough. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I think the other thing which Tusk provides, which Venno gave the lamp as well, was Vision. When you see a Night Stalker on the other team, you're thinking, man, the Vision game is going to be lost. When it's nighttime, he can farm an Ag Scepter, get a gem, you lose all sense of map control. And even before that stage where he's got an Ags and a gem, just nighttime Vision is very hard to fight against the Night Stalker. So you've got Venomancer, Plague Wards, and the Sigil to give you some scouting capability. So... I feel like these are two very useful heroes to have, and Puppy as a captain draft has always prioritized having these heroes which can provide that little bit of extra vision to help make sure you're picking the right fights and moving around the map in the most effective ways possible. Certainly. Rubik next picked up by Empire, another great hero for being able to uh, be effective in those team fights. obviously, creating havoc with that spell steal. Also, as well, in the early stages, a pretty strong laning hero, I'd say. Uh, you have a you know pretty nice disable there, 1.5 seconds at level 1 with the lift, and then you've also got the stun off the back of that. Uh, Fade Bolt, also just a great nuke for being able to burn somebody down. And Team Secret, Ooh. essentially ramping up the aggression there with the Ancient Apparition. What do you think of that pick there? <laughs> it's the, the Venno AA duo is just so dirty. The it, the AA Ice Blast comboed with the Poison over the Venomancer just wrecks heroes. You kind of just whittle them away and then you hit them with an Ice Blast and there's just no coming back there. And that's where no amount of heal is going to necessarily help you against the Venomancer. You want to heavily be considering a pipe on the side of Team mm. Empire, but it's always a question of who actually buys a pipe of inside. It's such a uncommonly bought item, one of the least bought items in the game. and. That's where you can't just say, okay, well, we're reversing Veno AA, let's just, X here is going to buy a pipe. You, there's very few candidates about, like, that are really viable to get that. You could farm it on a Doom, but then you're missing out on getting a good timing on your Ag Scepter, on your BKB if you feel you need it. You have got the, the Rubik with Null Field, which negates some of the magic damage, but that doesn't really come online until much later on in the game. You normally go, don't get points until level 10. Sometimes you just go for, like, maybe two in Telekinesis and start leveling up, depending on your level progression, but... It can be very hard to play against this AA Venno AoE combo, and you've got the setup. Naga just sleeps, sets everything up, and then you walk on in, drop a poison over, follow up with an ice blast. I feel like Empire are somewhat able to be okay with this, as you mentioned, the vision advantage that you've got with the Night Stalker. That's going to be their key component to being able to, you know, deal with the the huge amount of magical damage that's coming out right there. And the Rubik helps a little bit as well, as you mentioned, with that null field. Uh, the other big thing here that I'm a little bit concerned about, though, is that you kind of don't get that Aghanim Scepter online until a little bit later. So all of the ways that Empire has to deal with the massive amount of magical damage that's coming out come online at the later stages of the game. So if you were to hit around that mid-game timing, if Secret take a big team fight there and are able to really wipe away Team Empire, it's going to be, well, I mean, they're going to be a team wipe. <laughs> I feel you like know, there's a potential for that. I, I absolutely normally agree, but this isn't an offlane or a support Night Stalker. I think he's going mid because they got Rubik and Dazzle now, so... They've got their two supports. Huh. Definitely a core Night Stalker. Whether it's off lane or mid, we'll have to wait and see because Doom is potentially a safe lane hero, but I think it might be a mid for this game at least. <laughs> That's a throwback. They may realize like we need this Ag Scepter up as fast as possible to give us some great aggression, and that's where they may just be putting it on Yoku in the mid lane or... 
And I, I guess that, it seems Yoku's mostly playing mid now. The resolution switched over to the off lane. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I, and I like what you said there about you know them realizing and reconstructing their draft a little bit. Maybe this was always the plan to go Night Stalker mid, but again, that flexibility that you talked about early in the draft that you leave open the possibility to be able to run this in a mid role. You have the possibility there to change the way that the farm prioritization goes. And I think that's pretty cool. I always like to be able to see you know, these top tier teams playing the heroes in roles that uh, they're traditionally not played in, or at least according to the meta. And with the meta consistently shifting and evolving now, it, it makes a lot of sense. So I will also say the Dazzle pick uh, makes sense also, but it's a little bit strange considering I feel like Ancient Apparition is one of those heroes that with the DOT and the, uh, the fact that he eliminates all the healing can be a little bit of a, a counter to him, but I think the Grave is, is good enough that it makes sense here. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways they counter each other. Like, yeah, AA Ice Blast mm -hmm. can secure a kill on a hero that gets low that would otherwise survive because they got grave. But at the same time, time the grave right when a hero is about to get down to, well, get down too low to that where he's going to shatter or whatever. You keep them alive and then the Ice Blast wears off. And similarly, all this AoE damage, if they don't die on the Ice Blast, you've got the Dazzle to heal back up and negate the poison over damage. So I think Dazzle simultaneously counters the secret lineup while being countered himself by the AI Ice Blast. It's, and it's very much like, conditional on the Ice Blast even landing. Yeah, well, certainly a possibility to outplay each other, which is always fun to see. And Disruptor is going to be the last pick here out of Team Secret. So two supports their pick the end this should be an interesting lineup of cores indeed so should be the mid venomancer that you were talking about earlier probably yeah i think uh, unless we're seeing disruptor go mid or something crazy <laughs> he did get buff at thunderstrike now with a nine second cooldown at level four if you want to go for the max thunderstrike build which is not so popular <laughs> um but, you know for sometimes reinventing The wheel. Very cool. We'll see you carry Naga. I haven't seen Jackie play Naga in a while, but he was, I'd say, one of the best Western Naga players. He, I mean, he learned a lot from Miracle, the Southeast Asian player who really brought Naga into the meta game. And Jackie was like, watched tons of his replays, followed exactly what he did. I remember him tweeting about, like, dude, this guy's insane. Mm -hmm. How he moves around the map. I'm gonna learn to do what he does, and he really has been playing this hero for longer than most of the Western carry players. Yeah, that's awesome. I I love to see that type of the collaboration. That's the thing that's so cool about uh, video games in general, I feel like, is that you've got this sort of collaborative effort of everybody trying to get better. And obviously there is the competition part as well of esports in general, but at the same time, everybody kind of, you know, they know each other, they like each other, they learn from each other, and it feels like a, a real community, which is just so lovely. I'm just, I'm loving community. <laughs> No, you say they're lovely. Just wait till you read uh, Twitch chat or like 4chan VG or something. I don't know. All these. And then you see the true colors come out, perhaps. Awesome. Yeah. Well. No, we, we love we love you, Twitch chat. Is... You're so good. You're so great. I love you guys so much. We can do a quick little introduction to the players while we're waiting to load on in. We got Aloha Dance here for Empire, who's going to be playing that. Uh, oh my goodness. I can't click on the hero at all. Rubik. We also got No Fear here, who's going to be playing the Dazzle. Silent is going to be playing your Doom. Off to the side, Yoku is going to be on that Ember Spirit. And so we're just gonna, I can't actually click on the heroes right now. No problem. No, no big deal at all. Night Stalker is going to be the resolution. Just reborn hitboxes, I guess. There we when go. When in doubt, the first step in, for casters is blame reborn. Blame the client. Blame. <laughs> blame per so the two things you can blame these days is perfect world servers. If you're, even if you're not on perfect world servers for China, even if it's on China game, um, and you blame reborn. So it's never, never our fault. Right? Wonderful. Always defer blame. <laughs> <laughs> Mics aren't working. You guys should restart it. So it's the problem with the client, you know. <laughs> Definitely. No big deal uh -huh. at all. Um, and then on Team Secret, we've got Pilot Dai who's going to be playing that Ancient Apparition heading up to the top lane. Jackie Mao going to be playing your Naga Siren off to the side as well. Weeha is on that Metomancer in the mid lane. Got Puppy playing the Disruptor. And last but not least down here, Misery on that Tusk. Getting ready for a little bit of a, a fight potentially brewing up in the top lane. Maybe going to see somebody get cliffed in a wonderful fashion. Or uh, I, I kind of feel like at this point, considering the Tusk is down in the bot lane, uh, Empire has a little bit stronger capability to run at this team here. Yep. They've, it's 5v4, and they've just got great heroes for level 1 brawling. You run in first with Night Stalker, and that's a stout shield Night Stalker with 5 armor, 600 HP. 
Dazzle, Heal, Rubik, Lift, they've got the far superior level 1 fight. Even if Tusk joins, I feel Empire have the edge in this 5v5. Chilling Touch onto 4 heroes is a lot of damage. That's the one thing you always have to worry about if you're Team Empire, but they're ready to strike. <laughs> Let's go! I think that they're waiting to really go on into this one. Aloha Dance coming on in. Chilling Touch does get dropped down as well. Kinetic Field. There's the lift onto the Ancient Apparition. He's falling so quickly. Jackie Mal might be in a little bit of trouble as well. We do see Tusk Disruptor end up picking up the Bounty Rune, and they get away with both of the Bounty Runes and only one hero dead. So, not as bad a trade as you'd maybe think based on Empire's position. So they get out, yeah, just with the one casualty. Disruptor, not the ideal hero to get that bounty rune on. You'd much rather it would have been picked up by Weeha in the mid lane Venomancer, but he's still versing a hero who similarly did not get a bounty rune. So Yoku got the first blood, which does give him a bit of a gold lead in this mid lane, though. What do you think about this aggressive tri lane up to your top for uh, for Empire? It seems they really just are respecting the Naga Siren as that the best carry in this game. You cannot match up to Naga Siren late game. Doom not going to out-carry. Ember doesn't actually match up that well against Naga, despite being a great counter to PL as an illusion carry, because Naga, you split your illusions and you mm. send one to every different lane. So I think Ember's not actually a good counter to Naga, and that's where they want to make sure Naga gets a very slow Radiance, and they feel confident that with a Night Stalker and two good range supports, they can contest this lane. Yeah, and it certainly seems like there's a potential for some kills up top here. Playing very, very defensive on Team Secret. They don't want to end up getting caught out to the side. They are going to be going for this pull here, and it looks like they might be able to contest this a little bit. Another Chilling Touch gets dropped down, and you'd normally think that they would be able to, oh, fight against this one. Kinetic Field goes down. Going to be no fear getting in a little bit of trouble. So much damage from that Chilling Touch, but looks to be a little bit okay now. Just going to back on out, testing the waters, making sure that everything is all wonderful in, the, uh, in here. And mid lane, it looks like the Ember Spirit it's been able to get a little bit better of the the venomancer six and three versus six and two so actually relatively even and down bot as well going a little bit more the way of tusk but everything looking really even across the board yeah it comes down to the top lane i think for how this goes i think it's a good move to do the if you put the supports with the doom you want doom then doom doesn't get much xp this is a hero who really benefits from early fast levels the buffs he receives are massive to his scorched earth but you've got to get fast level 5, level 6, level 7 on this hero to really benefit from it, and that's what he's going to get by having a 1v1 lane. Right, right now, the CS might be even against Misery or slightly Tusk favored, but once Ooh. Doom gets level 5, Tusk is in a lot of trouble. Mid lane, seeing the Thunderstrike get dropped down onto Yoku. Needs to create a little bit of separation. He is helps up. That's also a Gale on top of him, slowing him down a little bit more. Does he get enough right click? One more. That's going to be it. First Blood going the way of the Disruptor. So Bounty Rune and the First Blood. This is going to be a really rich Disruptor here. Yeah, that Boots First just paying off there. Pilot Eye doing the hard support role in Puppy. It's a lot for his team by up top lane. Having Jackie boots. ends up getting caught there. Gonna split one more time again, jumping on top of him. Chilling Touch is down, but it's not really gonna be able to dissuade them from going after this Naga Siren anymore. And he's actually gonna be able to walk away from that one. It looked a little bit scary with three heroes on top of him. And now Puppy's showing up bottom lane with the double damage rune, so silent. You need to be careful. Oh, jump forward. Is he going to end up going down here? Thunderstrike. He's just turned around. He doesn't care. That buff that he ended up getting for his. Uh, Oh, maybe glimpse back one more time. They're looking for him. He <laughs> yeah, silence like, have I still got my heal up? Eh, okay, it's worn off. Let's back off. <laughs> he also doesn't have boots. Puppy with the boots. If he had boots over Puppy, likely he could have gone in for that kill. But oh, misery just got arcane back up. He could look for a solo kill on Silent here if he's not careful. Yeah, it's a oh, little it's bit so scary. Low. Oh my goodness, it, he, it's just terrifying being able to run in here. And the fact that he doesn't have that uh, Scorched Earth back up for another couple of seconds here it makes it all the more dangerous. But Misery also being really low, not wanting to press his luck too much further. But already the Disruptor really making a, his presence felt across the map. I think that uh, the being able to leave the, sol the lane up top here, I think that's really key because it's going to mean that you're going to get some more farm on this Naga Siren, a little bit more EXP. All of those things are wonderful, and they're not dying. And I think that's the biggest thing so far is that the fact that this Naga Siren's been able to consistently make his way out of these sort of uh, semi-ganks that have been coming in from the aggressive tri lane, but it's nighttime now. You need to be a little bit careful. He's in bottom. Oh, Misery ends up getting caught off to the side. He does get glimpsed back. That was, oh, up top again, maybe? A little bit more fighting. <laughs> Just going kind <laughs> yeah. of crazy all over here. The glimpse is like, let's bounce bottom, let's bounce top. Rubik TP didn't still got off the telekinesis, so the glimpse back may have saved him, but it looked like Silent could have got the kill. Silent now going snowboard on bottom lane. He goes down. Down there by Misery. Consistently making the pressure felt down here in bottom by that uh, 
by that tusk and puppy just moving around the map he's got no fear at all to go on over here and do this yet again in the mid lane we're seeing a little bit of dance yo we had making his life terrible right now yoku is not in a very happy place that being said he's been able to get the farm that he's wanted just consistently feeling the pressure yeah. thankfully hasn't been able to get uh taken down quite yet since that early gank from the disruptor but speaking of which misery moving around to the side here he has his bottle up I think that Yoku should be okay. He's got Remnant. I think he's going to be fine here for this gank as long as he is able to get it off. No, Flame Guard comes up one more time trying to get away. He's slowed on down, but after the bottle charge, he's going to be okay. And it looks like they might opt to just back on out. Yeah, don't want to end up pressing their luck too much further. They force a TP from No Fear, which is still some wasted time for Empire where they're TPing in heroes to react and then Misery's wasn't going to get much out of the offlane at that given time. At least some, Puppy was down there getting levels. So we are seeing points in Thunderstrike. Puppy's got two in the Thunderstrike already. With the fast Arcane Boots, he can sustain spamming this out on enemy heroes for a lot of damage output. I don't know if he'll keep getting more points up to level 3, level 4, but this spell did receive some buffs. Doom on Misery now in the jungle, though. Doom on Misery, also a little bit of action oh. up top. That's going to be a little bit... He's going to end up getting denied to this. Nicely done by Puppy. Would have been great to be able to get the last hit there, but not quite able to make it happen. And meanwhile, as I was talking about that, Night Stalker up in the top lane, when it ended up turning to nighttime there, he made it really rain down on that Ancient Apparition's head. Uh, the Chilling Touch was tossed out a second ago, but didn't end up really being able to sustain the, the damage to turn the gank around on Night Stalker. He's just so tanky right now. He's got an incredible ability to burst people down. Six armor on him as well. Really solid. As the Tread's already looking to complete an urn soon, and we'll see a gank towards mid. Weeha needs to be careful. Mid lane, Invis rune up. That's going to be the chains dropped in just a second, I assume. Does end up catching them, though. Gale on top of two, but Aloha Dance is here. Lift back one more time, and that's going to end up being a kill. Ember Spear gets the last hit. 300. Oh, simultaneously both. bottom, though. Oh my goodness. Puppy going crazy down here. Does toss out the Thunderstrike. Misery able to take down the Dazzle. Jump forward again. Snowball. Puppy's oh, ends up going down nonetheless, despite the nice Walrus Punch. That Scorched Earth is just too strong. It ends up getting disengaged now, so he's not going to be able to run down Misery. Yeah, that snowball almost worked against Puppy in the end there. It looked like he could have gotten out of range and just kept on running. Probably would have died to the Scorched Earth, but... Silent, this is where Doom is a beast. Level 4 Scorched Earth, you're looking at huge damage output and sustain when that, whenever that's online. If you go on him, if he's got the heal up, You've got to burst him down in a couple Ooh. of seconds. Mid lane, Aloha Dance ends up getting caught by the Gale. Right clicks, a bound. He's going to end up going down, I think. Oh, never mind. Uh, Piney Ligon really low as well. The Rubik does end up falling in the end. And meanwhile, the Ember Spirit picks off the Ancient Apparition. He is getting really low now. Needs to make a ways away, but not going to end up being enough. Night Stalker coming in as well. Wants to take revenge on his teammate that ended up going down. Static Storm dropped. Is no way to be able to catch out Puppy now. He's going to end up walking away. One more right click. Triple kill for Weeha on mid lane. Very nicely done there. Take a look at that fight recap. Heck of a lot of gold, about 14 to 1500 going his way. And that is the way that you want to start yeah. if you're a Venomancer. And that was only, it would have been worse if not for Doom getting what looked to be a solo kill on bottom lane on the Tusk. He, Doom's on cooldown, so he would have used the ultimate and Scorched Earth to get, secure that kill. But that mid lane was just so well played by Secret. In goes with Yoki, though, he just respawned and had a Fire Remnant still there. He's getting baited, though. Oh god, it's not looking good. Fade no. not going to be enough. Snowball comes in as well. No, he's going to end up going down yet again. Oh, lift one more time. Maybe going to be able to make it happen. Chains get tossed as well, but he ends up falling. Venomancer now just completely and totally tearing apart the team. We're looking at 13 kills in 8 minutes. This has been a crazy action-packed game so far. He's having really big problems moving around using the Fire Room. It's like, it feels like he needs to have the Fire Room up before he goes mm. in or... Or he just has no way of escaping because the poison, the fire that only moves as fast as you move. <laughs> oh, my dance oh. is going to end up falling yet again. Oh, Shallow Grave coming out last second. Is the TOD going to finish him off? Maybe Misery going to be able to make his way away. It does end up taking him out. So Rubik falls to the Venomancer DOT. Meanwhile, Resolution wanting to make a little bit of action happen here in the mid lane yet again. But he's running into three heroes. This is not going to be good at all. Oh, falling down really low. That's going to be another kill. Resolution ends up going down at nighttime, no less. I, uh, Puppy has fully justified this Thunderstrike build. He has just been able to spam it out, dish out huge damage as a support, and there hasn't really been any scenarios where I'm like, oh, if he had a couple like, a couple extra points in glimpse there and more range, it would have been able to do more, but yeah, it's definitely. just been the damage output they've needed. They've got plenty of lockdown and control coming from Tusk, the Venomancer slows, and the damage has just been more than justified. 
it just seems like the rotations have been so solid on both sides of the team. And it, you mentioned it, the Thunderstrike there as well. You know, new meta, we're in the new meta, why not? Let's make it happen. Uh, does also have here just the boots up, I believe. Oh, Ancient Apparition. He's The other thing that's been cool about this is while all this action has been happening down bot, Ancient Apparition's been able to pick up levels against this Doom. And so he's sitting on level four now. He's going to be able to try and work his way towards that Ice Blast. And I feel like they're going to be in a really good position if they're able to get that up on him pretty soon here. Yeah. Also, the slow siege in the mid lane from Weeha with these wards is just... Oh, yeah. The most annoying thing in the world. Ganking him is just a nightmare, and Yoku's constantly in trouble. He again gets gailed, and whenever he's being gailed and hit by the poison sting, you can't cast a fire in and expect it to suddenly zip you out of there. You have to have a pre cast one, otherwise, you're, it's just not moving at a, a pace where you're going to stay alive. So, constantly under pressure in this mid lane, down to about 100 HP there just from that one gale plus poison sting. The gale is now already maxed out. We have level 10. 10 minutes in the game with the help of those kills and more importantly the Midas now is 5-1. and one. He is crushing Yoku here. Yeah, he is going crazy and it has 5,700 net worth right now, the highest in the game. Doom is the only one that's even close at this point and I just feel like as this keeps on going on further and further, it's going to be the item advantage that you're going to be able to get. They do have a pretty decent amount of, uh, I mean, if you take a look at the team net worth and EXP right now, Secret pretty far ahead, 2,000 roughly as well as 1,000 in the bank in terms of net worth. It's looking really good for them, and I feel like the early advantage is what they've been trying to build this into. Oh, up top, they do drop the Static Storm on top of Resolution. He should be able to stay alive through this, though. I think that was just a defensive to keep Puppy alive. Didn't want to end up feeding away this lead to Resolution at all. That's just something we haven't even really taken into consideration with all the action happening. There is a farming Naga Siren in this game. That right. hasn't been farming particularly well. Did have a really rough lane, but it's still sitting at a kind of acceptable place. We're not looking at a fast 15, 16 minute radiance by any means, but Jackie is just going to get all the space in the world because teammates can fight without him. Venom now has level 2 Poison Nova, Ice Blast is online, Disrupt is dishing out some big damage. That's just where they don't need Jackie to have any items right now. If anything, it's going to be you farm while we fight, even if that means we're fighting 4v5. And I think that that's just, it's terrifying because once you end up getting that Radiance online, obviously your farm just incredibly powerful. You're going to be able to move around the map consistently, push on out the lanes. Do you think that this is one of those ones where you go for travels first after Radiance? I think, absolutely. It's It just works so well with the Radiance being able to move around the map and the shorter cooldown now compared to your TP scroll. Yeah. Makes it just the ideal item for a Naga. And I feel like there's no pressure to be able to pick up another item to have to fight with your team. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. We do have a smoke coming on up. Three men rotating on through into mid lane. Looks like Empire wants to turn this one back around here. The Doom is in the area as well. Should have it back up. And I think that they... Well, you know what, though? There's another secondary smoke coming out. They're going to run into each other. Ships in the night. Oh, Yoku in a little bit of... Oh, no. Actually, Puppy's in some trouble now. Static Storm does catch on to two, though. Gale catches Poison Nova coming out. Are we going to have enough follow-up? There's the AA Blast. Yoku might fall down to this one. One more hit. That's going to be enough to kill him. Meanwhile, this Doom on top of Weeha. He's gone really low as well. Tusk kicks out the Doom in return, and it looks like they might be able to get the deny on Weeha if they get there quick enough. Misery falling low as well. Resolution ends up getting the last hit there on the Tusk, and actually Weeha able to bottle back through after the Doom duration ends up expiring. So still staying alive. Is getting really low though. It needs to make his way away before he ends up getting taken out here. Resolution may be a little careful. There's another Ice Blast in a couple of seconds here. That is terrifying. It needs to... A retreat probably fairly soon. Doesn't look like Pi's going to throw it right away. But again, we talk... Oh, there it is. Is this actually going to kill him? Are you kidding me? Wow. He was under the tower too. He had... <laughs> if he's watching the minimap, you see that one coming. Oh, God. That's oh, really not good. unfortunate. Jeez. Um, and Ember now trying to make his way away as well. Yeah. But again, it's just, it's so much room for this Naga here, who is consistently being able to get these, this, the free farm up in the top lane, and you give that to a Naga Siren, doesn't matter who's playing it at all, and obviously, they're going to be one of the best in the game at being able to farm on up, as we mentioned earlier in that draft. A 4v5 team fight going the way of Secret in the mid lane there, that's the crazy thing, and Weeha has not exactly got good fighting items, he went for a boot to travel after the Midas, so, great kind of farming build, and just general build to kind of really power level and power farm, but it doesn't help you fight right now particularly. He's it, got less than a thousand HP. Yeah. <laughs> the attack speed doesn't help. The boots of travel help a little bit if you're getting slowed down in a fight with the extra movement speed to escape, but 
realistically, you'd be much better off having like a point booster and building towards your eggs for all the stats and HP you get. Not to say he's doing the wrong build, it's very much like, this is not a team fighting build, but it works because he's so high level. Just having level 2 poison over and the synergy with the ice blast and the lockdown that Puppy and, con and Misery can provide with the kinetic field, the snowball, the warrior's punch, it's yeah. working out just fine. Yeah, meanwhile as well, off to the side, Dazzle able to deny the tower up top, which does help. Uh, being able to slow down that gold gain a little bit, but still, you're losing towers at this point in time. You're not having the Naga Saren in the fights. You've also got the fact that you're going for essentially, as we've mentioned, the most greedy build that you could possibly go on this lineup, and they're still taking these fights. It's looking very, very deadly at this point in time for, uh, for Team Empire and their ability to close on out this game, because the longer it goes, it's really not going to get a whole lot better. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, their their timing window to me is very much the next five minutes of this game. From now till about 20 minutes. Yoku's going for the drums build on Ember Spirit, so he's not even going to have... Like, sometimes you see if you're like, okay, I need to go more late game, let's just get a Ring of Aquila and then build towards my Battle Fury as early as possible, but he's not looking at a good time on that. So they need to be using all their smokes, Ooh. constant ganks, constant action, and... That they may have found one. Envy. That's going to be a jump forward. Is going to be able to take him out really quickly here. Nicely done there. Night Stalker ends up picking up the last hit. Static Storm was dropped as well as Kinetic Field, but with no follow-up. Puppy might be in a little bit of trouble here as well. No glimpse back up for another couple seconds. Silenced up. Earn charge down as well. That's going to be a couple more right clicks. Maybe going to be able to bait this one in. Poison Nova ends up hitting on the several as well. This is not the team fight, I'm sure, if they want to take. Oh. Steals the Poison Nova as well. Weeha dropping low. There's the Shadow Grave on top of the roof to keep him alive. He's going to end up PPing away as well. Oh, uh, that's a Walrus Punch. He's going to end up falling. Nicely done. And the turnaround triple kill now for this Night Stalker, who is dropping a little bit low, but with the Earn Charge, should stay alive a little bit longer. That could have just been a one for nothing, and Secret committed oh. to fight, and it's going to turn into a team wipe. Misery dropping low. He's going to snowball. Ah, I think that he's going to be able to still get this kill, though. Honestly, one more hit. Walrus Punch. No, he throws it around. Shards Walrus Punch. Oh. Misery making it happen. Oh, okay. my goodness. Misery says, what do you know, gods? <laughs> he's not team wipe. <laughs> This is easy kill. Yeah, that was definitely, like, that's a huge one, because you end up just getting that huge streak on the Night Stalker, and then all of a sudden, it ends up all going for naught. Silent is up here following, stalking Puppy. The Sentry Ward doomed down on top of him. I think that this is a very dead puppy. Not something anybody wants to see. Oh, that's cruel. <laughs> I have to say, also, I, I, I just feel like it's, that team fight was pretty much the best that it could have on right there for Empire, but then it ended up of falling apart at the end with the disengage yeah. and like you mentioned the fact that they have this window right now to be able to to make this happen it was pretty much the best that you could have hoped for and it still ended up working what do you think empire needs to do at this point to get back into this game i think they want to keep on fighting ganking unfortunately it's now daytime but i think they go with the next darkness 90 seconds away at some time uh, ideally, they want to be using their smokes, kind of as mentioned. They've only got one left, which is where they've got to time this well. And I think going for a smoke gank before uh, they have nighttime may be an issue. Resolution doesn't get hit by the A boss. Oh, he did actually. Never mind. That was the Walrus Punch effect. Never mind. He didn't. Snowball in on top of Misery again. Rubik Steel and Spells abound. He's going to be able to bring him on back here as well. That's going to be a void, as well as the Silence Crippling Field going down on top of Misery. They're going to disengage now with the Venomancer coming in. Those Boots of Travel not wanting to make it happen. They do have a little bit of help now as well. This might be an opportunity for the first song of the game if they want to try and catch him out. Is going to not opt to do it so far, and it looks like they're going to be content to just let Empire walk away from this one at least. For Empire, they're holding on to Yoku's TP. He wants to try to take the T1 tower and then have and engage at the top lane if possible, or at least to force rotations towards him, but it may be too many heroes for him to handle. Uh-oh, jump forward, Static Storm on top of Yoku. He's getting really low now, is going to end up getting glimpsed on back into the Static Storm one more time. Again, he falls to the Disruptor, making things happen across the map. That was a great TP, just coordination from Misery and Puppy. TP's in as the Snowball Warrior's Punch happens and hits him with the Silence instantly. Definitely. Oh, Snowball in again. Oh, that's just creeps. He just wants to farm. Well, that dance wants to get in on the action as well. Do you have some more stuff? Every single time I look around, just Weeha's just hitting somebody continually with these poison touches and gales. It's just awful. I hate playing against Venomancer so much. and uh, Especially for a Night Stalker. You're, you're trying to use your movement speed at nighttime as one of your biggest advantages over your opponent, but Venomancer can just negate that. 
Well, and you mentioned it the Ember as well. It, it, it just messes with all of these heroes yep. and their ability to make anything happen. The Remnants, is, it's a thing where you normally expect to be able to get away from these type of situations, and when you get Gale, you just can't. The Remnant doesn't move fast enough. Night Stalker picking up his Aghanim Scepter as well. Does look like they're going to come and try and find Weeha yet again. No, not going to be able to make it happen so far. And I guess they're just wanting to make it nighttime a little bit longer. Maybe find a kill here in a second. I think it was about to become nighttime in the next minute or so. So he can just pop this now. And then Ooh. when it ends, it will be nighttime as well. Bottom lane, Puppy falling low is going to end up getting taken out there. Nicely done. Gale on top of him yet yeah. again. So 270 <laughs> movement speed at nighttime. Uh, that cripples you. Yeah. It cripples you and it fills you with fear. Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not usually what Night Stalker is going yeah. to do. He's meant to be the one dishing out the crippling fear. What is this? <laughs> um, oh, but please. Exactly. Let's but. take a look at the team net worth for a second. Uh, Secret, it, despite the fact that it feels like they're in control of this game, only a 1,500 net worth, and EXP, it's only about 1,000. Do you think that this is going to really start to switch around here in a little bit, though? It, it kind of feels that way. It can if the game plays out at a slow pace where both teams play a farm game that's more passive, but Empire will not look to play that game. They've got the Ag Scepter on resolution. Time for them to constantly fight. They'll look to pick up a gem as early as they can afford it just to get map control away from Team Secret. Mm. Oh god, that's Dex from Song as well on top of him. Aloha Dance ends up getting caught. Looks like Sound's gonna be able to make his way away, but Nagasan picks up that kill. Having her Radiance. No Song now for this next team fight. It looks like Empire wants to try and push the tempo here a little bit, but with Rubik down, he's been able to have a big impact in these fights. Do you think that they still should take this one? They can, they've got Doom, and Shadowblade Initiation is available for Silent if he wants to go charging in with that, although has been scattered out by the Creep Wave and needs to be a little bit careful here playing very confidently with the Scorched Earth up, but once that wears off, we may see a secret engagement. Oh, Yoku here is going to be able to lay down the chains if he wants. Snowball down onto Silence. That's going to be a chains on this Disruptor on the back line. That's going to end up picking him down really quickly. Glimpse back, not going to be enough. Ember Spirit takes him out. Meanwhile, the Venomancer kills Puppy, or Doom, excuse me. Jump forward again, A Blast, trying to make their way away if possible. It's not looking good at this point for Empire. Resolution ends up getting caught out as well. He's going to fall in a second, I believe. No Fear tried to grave him, but I think he's going to end up dying and might die for his trouble as well no fear goes down tusk with the double kill and they only end up losing the disruptor silent just like ran it he was so confident in empire strength right now at this stage of the game that he tanked power take like four heroes and he did he only barely got the doom off he was lucky to actually get doom off in that fight and i i don't know why he was just running from behind the t1 top tower underneath it four heroes because that that to me was what really cost empire there just having him run in way too cocky and there was the backup wasn't really there for him no one's got bkbs night soccer can't just run in and expect to stay alive he doesn't want to get galed and slowed down and as a result secret just kind of sit back and wait for empire to get too aggressive and i think secret know they're going to play super aggressive because the late game does not look good for empire that's where secret just have to sit back and wait for those kind of mistakes Definitely. And again, you ended up seeing that in that last situation, the last team fight. You got a decent initiation in terms of the Ember Spirit being able to pick off Puppy, but he was able to get off his spells still to a large extent. And I think that you need to be able to find and take him out as well as the Ancient Apparition at the start of these fights. Because if an A Blast comes out, and again, Resolution getting Gailed, it is going to be a Void on top of him. Slows abound. It looks like he's going to be fine though. Can't really fight into this. And with a little bit of help coming in from the side as well, Misery is invisible to find something here looking for his opening if he's able to take out dazzle pretty quickly a blast oh he ends up falling down tusk gets the kill with the a blast coming in simultaneously so so difficult to be able to fight into that easy pickings and they're just going to keep on throwing those ice blasts around pi doesn't even even want to come to fights he wants to be further away looking for these snipes and looking to maximize the aoe coming out from that and I like this pickup. Envy has picked up an early gem on Naga, wanting to counter the Shadow Blade initiations of oh. Doom. And... It looks like they're going to be able to get the Static Storm on Yoku right from the start. Ember Spear getting separated from his team. Meanwhile, Pi up in the top lane getting taken out as the Ancient Apparition. So trading heroes so far, but not sure if it's an even trade. Meanwhile, the Doom getting chased down as well by the Snowball. They're trying to catch out Resolution as well at the same time. Fights going across the map. Misery ends up getting doomed up as well. It looks like Silent's going to be able to make his way away. Down line in the bottom by the Rune. Jackie is going to have to run away as well. So at the end of the day, you only end up losing the Ancient Apparition for the Naga. And it doesn't look like they're really going to be able to find anything else here. Yeah.
I'll be forced to use the glimpse to try and keep Tusk alive there. Otherwise, they could have been able to just chase him down, stop his TP out. He kind of allowed him to TP out by using his only ability to cancel that. But it's still, to me, a, a fine trade for Secret. It's a one even trade, and they get to fall back and farm. They're putting Empire in the back foot. Now, daytime as well, so it's going to slow down any potential aggression coming out from Empire. And... Again, it just doesn't feel like Empire are gonna get too much stronger or scale too well. Doom is a great late game hero in his own way in his own ways, even as a spellcaster with an Agonims, with a Shivers. You go for the AC build, he's got the critical strike and pack leader's aura from the Alpha Wolf, so there is potential for a Doom to scale to late game, just does not match up well against Naga Siren. You're never gonna get the Doom off on the real Naga Siren, especially when Jackie's got gem. Yeah, he's so ready for it. I, I think you're right that you know, we ended up talking about what we might see out of the, the Naga in terms of the pickups and obviously Boots of Travel increasing the farm. It feels like this next item, it's still allowing the rest of your team to be able to do the majority of the damage because they don't need a ton of damage from everybody else because of the way that they started out yeah. this game. And instead, it's just creating that extra little bit of tactical advantage of sort of balancing out against what the Night Stalker is bringing to the table in terms of his Aghanim Scepter. So pretty cool there. I, I like that a lot. And looks like they're just looking to see if they can find anybody over here to the side. But it's soccer not going to be able to get any pickoffs at this point in time. And the great thing about the secret draft is that the damage up comes from the, the spellcasters, the Veno, the AA, the Disruptor. Envy doesn't need to go for any kind of real DPS. He just needs to tank up, stay alive, and have annoying illusions, split pushing and right clicking supports. You make an illusion, you just right click Rubik with one, right click Dazzle with another, and suddenly they've got these Radiance illusions riptiding them. And if they get hit by an Ice Blast or Venomancer, Poison Sting, Poison Nova kind of combo, they are 100% dead. So I imagine Jackie will just go into the standard Manta, into Octarine, may even get Octarine called before the Manta just because of how much HP and bonus mana pool it gives you. But regardless of the build from Jackie, he never really needs that DPS from like a Butterfly Diffusal. It's just going to be pure survivability for his illusions. Well, it should be very interesting to see how this goes. We do have Doom down here as well. It's going to be Shadow Bladed up, but I think that recognizing the fact that the rest of the team is in the jungle, a little bit too scary to move on into there. I do also like the, the Blink Dagger pickup by Rubik. I think it helps, um, but again, it's a little bit tough because of the Radiance Burn, being able to make the effective use of that. He is going to be able to get away from the Snowball at the very least, and Aloha Dance finding his way away at this point in time. I'm curious to see these next couple of minutes, which type of fights they have, because you mentioned there the, the sort of Empire wanting to be aggressive and make the fights happen. It becomes a little bit difficult once you start to get these other items up on, on Team Secret now, and I, I, I'm almost feel like in, if they don't make something happen in the next like one or two minutes here, it's just going to be done. <laughs> and on top of that, it's hard to be aggressive when you've lost the vision game. Your opponents have a gem, they've got Naga Siren Illusions, Venomancer Plague Wards, the Tusk Sigil if they want, moving around and scouting. Resolution did end up picking up a gem of his own, so they're going to look to try and take back some of that control, but all of those spells I mentioned, you can have those up, and it doesn't matter if you get dewarded if you've got illusions from Naga scouting out the whole map, so they've got to use what they can at the right time, and that's the smokes. They're going to go for it now with the Ags gem, Night Stalker leading the charge, hoping to find a key objective or a key pick off here. Naga Siren going to be over there as well, taking a little bit of Radiance Burn damage on these heroes as they smoke on up. They're not going to find anybody, though. A little bit too unfortunate, and again, it's it's just they're not quite able to keep up with the movement that we've been seeing here out of Secret, consistently being aware of where the heroes are and where they could potentially be. I think that the, to a large extent, when you end up playing at this level, you've got sort of an internal game sense of where the heroes probably are. You don't see them on the map for a little bit. You imagine there's a smoke coming up, and it looks like... I don't think they can go for... Are they going for Roche right now? I think they will. They see everyone on Empire rock up top lane. Yeah. Empire have no tier 1 tower to TP2 to come and contest this. It has reached nighttime, but Naga Illusions will push up mid, push up bottom. And you can, yeah, take Roche uncontested. Jeez. Empire, like you say, they've got that little internal map vision kind of going on. They may suspect this is going on, but as soon as they show themselves top, they're like, well, if they're a Roche, you can't get there in time, so yeah. our best bet is to just keep on pushing, try and take a tier 2 tower here, but ultimately Team Secret with an Aegis, they don't care about a tier 1 and a tier 2 too much. 
they're much more looking at the big picture, the long-term victory, which is going to come from getting more farm on the Naga. Oh. As I say that, they're engaging. Yeah, Song is only going to catch Silent, thankfully, but we do have off to the side here as well. Resolution might have to come on in. There's going to be the Static Storm on top of him, taking a heck of a lot of damage. Under Strike down as well. We did see the Venomancer ulti go out on top of the Night Stalker, I believe. It might have just been a Gale, but they end up catching out and killing the Doom there. And also the Dazzle as well. Very, very frustrating up in the top lane. Misery looking for a little bit more, seeing if he can potentially find it. Resolution really, really low after that one. Yeah, and they're still hunting with Misery on the front lines here. Needs to be careful because he's been scouted. Oh, in a he's little bit completely trouble. alone too. Ends up getting caught out. Crippling Fear down on top of him. Is he going to be able to stay alive? Oh, God, get the snowball. Not able to make it happen. We do see the Night Stalker end up ending his dominating streak. So they're in a little bit of trouble now off to the side. They do end up getting Vision. Glimpse on back. Resolution's going to end up going down here. So a little bit of a trade. They end up losing oh, the Tusk. They lost their gem. Oh, no. Yep. That... That's a huge pickup. The Tusk for the Night Stalker is like, okay, not not too bad for Empire, but when you lose your gem, that makes life very difficult because they cannot buy a new one anytime soon. Oh, really, really unfortunate. We have the split push coming out up in the uh, the bottom lane as well. Talked this whole game about vision and being able to have that advantage. Definitely frustrating to uh, to lose that one there. Aloha Dance pushing out this bottom lane as well. It It feels like now... They're in a really strong position. Do you think that Secret wants to try and push down these towers and, and take the fight to them, or do they keep playing the passive farming game here? They'll look to... They're not going to group up five and push. They'll continue to... Probably not... It's no longer going to be passive farming from Eternal Ember. He's going to be pressuring lanes very heavily. He's going to be sending out these illusions, which he can spam now with an Octarine Core. And by pushing out all the lanes, leads to pick off opportunities mm -hmm. because empire will be split up they'll have to have one hero defending the top lane another hero defending mid or bottom by split pushing all the lanes it just going to create openings for misery to find the shadow blade kill we're seeing it here he's found oh. silent and this has largely come from the split push it may not be a kill on silent here but they're doing some good damage and it looks like with the cold feet here comes we hire and a nice blast that's yep that's they found the pick off so you're constantly dealing with split push and that's where pickoff opportunities will just pre present themselves. It's like Misery here actually might need to get denied. Does end up getting that last ticket. The last tick would have been enough to kill him. So Ancient Apparition putting that one out. It's looking close. I, I think that the, you know, he did end up getting, using Doom there as well. So there's still more and more opportunities here to just continue to push on down. They're not really afraid of anything. Is there, I guess, pick, getting the Naga picked off is the really only thing that they need to be worried about? A silence yeah. on top of her and... And that can, I'd say, happen if Empire find the right engagement with a smoke gank. If they can smoke up, find vi find vision of Envy using the Night Stalker, which is about Ooh. to happen, actually. This is without a smoke. Oh. Radiant Vision doesn't see Envy yet. It looks like Yoku's going to walk in. They need damage as well. The problem is Envy also has 1,700 HP. Oh, God. They end up catching Yoku there with the with the song. That's going to be a disruption ulti on top of him as well. He's going to end up falling here. So frustrating. Like you said, it was really close to being able to turn that around. And if it, it looked like the Night Stalker was just walking away a little bit too fast, and his vision didn't quite catch yeah. eyes on that Naga. A little bit of unluck there as well as um, everything else that's been going on this game. And it's not just Naga who's the problem. The top net worth hero is actually Weeha on Venno, who's now got Blink, Ags, and Veil. Vale. Level 19. <laughs> the levels, it's, it's more about just being level 16, but he is level 19, so he's got a ton of HP and stats. He's the Aegis holder, and a Venomancer in the late game with an Ag Scepter is just a, a huge problem. You haven't got any BKBs up yet. There will be one soon on the Doom, as well as the Night Stalker. Ember's just a hero who never really farms a BKB, and if he gets hit by that Poison Nova, he's in trouble. Ooh, jump forward yet again. Aloha Dance dropping low. He's yeah. going to end up using all of his ulties. That's the stolen Plague Wards, though. Not going to be enough to really turn this around. Does get Grave there by Dazzle. Also see a Weave down as well, but the DOT should be able to finish off Rubik here in just a second. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, we do see Misery on top of Resolution, trying to create a little bit of separation for him with the TP not able to happen. Tusk gets the last hit. Two heroes down now in secret, looking to be in a commanding position, just rolling down the mid tower. They've had enough. They want to really take this one to the throat. Yeah. Aegis will expire soon, but it's not an issue at all for them. Venno doesn't really come close to dying, and if they go on him, it, it just sets him up for a huge poison nova, which comes up any second now. 
Oh god, Song down on top of him. They catch two in the Static Storm, as well as the Kinetic Field. There's the A Blast coming as well. BKB is up, keeping him alive a little bit longer, oh, but I think dead. that Yoku's gonna end up going down in just a second here. Naga Siren able to get the kill there on top of the Ember Spirit. Meanwhile, the Doom ends up taking out the Disruptor, trying to chase a little bit more. He's actually a tanky monster. Doom with the double kill gem on the ground. My goodness, making it happen. Oh. Team Empire bringing it back a little bit there. I don't think they'd seen Doom with Doom's BKB yet. If they'd called the BKB on Doom, they wouldn't have gone for that kill, I want to say. Because that was what led to their demise there. Jumping in, expecting that because they had the Disruptor Silence combo with an Ice Blast, they can just walk all over Team Empire. But the Doom BKB caught him by surprise. And then Venno also had no ulti. Yeah. I think also there as well, you saw the Aegis expire him right as the Sleight of Fist oh, damage was, was coming out. That was brutal. <laughs> and he not, had no mana either. Because that Aegis heal is almost instant. You go from being like a quarter HP to full HP in less than a second, it feels like. And yeah. the exact Sleight of Fist timing, like that's, you can know the Aegis timing, but if you use Sleight of Fist, it depends like which <laughs> unit you hit in which order. Yeah. That was some serious RNG coming out from Ember Spirit, but hey. Gotta get uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. To win this game, they're gonna need uh, that and a bit more. But <laughs> there's still, I mean, it's, you take a look at the net worth, it's about 7,500 that ended up being cut into a little bit more further on in the game. EXP as well, 8,000. So it's a lead. It's not insurmountable. It just feels like they don't necessarily have the pieces. That being said, we haven't talked about it a ton. Ember Spirit in the late game can become sort of a damage nightmare in terms of what he's able to deal out, mainly once you get those items up, already having the Battle Fury and the little mini crit. Not a ton, but not terrible either. He's only a thousand net worth behind the Naga Siren. Yeah, and he's going pure damage, which I think is the right way to play this when you're behind like this. If you go for a defensive build, yeah, you can stay alive with a KB or a Manta or whatever it may be, or some extra HP from a Scotty, but you're never going to win a fight without damage. You just have to go all in, play that high risk, high reward style where you go on pure DPS, Battle Fury Daedalus. Could now go for that defensive BKB to deal with the Venno AA, but I wouldn't even mind seeing him get another damage item just and hope that he can play around no. the secret aggression just using the fire remnants. Not get caught by a disruptor silence, try and avoid the poison over the ice blast using these, but. It's it's one of those things I feel like where you're you're playing to win versus playing to lose with grace where yeah. you end up not getting like, killed I, a ton of times. Yeah, it's like you, you get you die, if he dies three times in the next five minutes, it's like well, you can easily say oh he should have bought a BKB and he would have lived two of those three times, but the game losing BKB. That's yeah. uh, Lumi used to cast would always talk about these game losing BKBs where yeah it keeps you alive, but what are you actually doing while BKB'd? And in yeah. the case of Ember, it wouldn't be very much. Does look like Silent here might be able to catch out Puppy with the Shadow Blade initiation jump forward. Doesn't even have to use Doom, just torn apart. So this Doom is starting to really turn things back around at this point in time. He's the second highest in net worth, only 600 gold behind the Venomancer. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of a turnaround here. BKB's got his little plate mail up as well. Might be building that into a Shiva's guard next as well. It's, it's looking decent. It's looking pretty decent here. Silent is scary with his level of farm, so is potential for Empire in the late game. It's always going to be that Naga split push game that is such a nightmare to deal with. And Jackie, Manta style en route very soon. So we'll have the Manta Octarine, which is where you've kind of reached that critical mass of how do you stop the split push of the illusions? Oh, this is a little bit of a bad initiation, I feel like, for Radiant. They don't want to be here right now. Well, Resolution jump though. forward. Oh, catching actually. That's going to be a jump forward. Walrus Punch keeping them alive a little bit longer. There's the song coming out. Going to be able to keep them stuck in place a little bit longer. Silent separate. Going to be very snare. close to going down. I think he should be all right here, but yeah, he'll get, he'll get to the fountain. Man, they almost got the Venomets, so though. That was the key thing there. Do you want it to hold on to his ultimate as long as possible and save it for the Naga? Mm. Unfortunately, I know it just didn't go down, but Stolen Poison Nova, not bad, especially with Aloha, hence almost having an Ag Scepter. Oh. All, all these ultimates, Disruptor, AA, Venno, Naga, they all have some pretty damn nice Ags upgrades. This could be like, this could be, I think, the, the game winning item right here. You've got the, the possibility. It's going to come down to the play, though, honestly, yeah. and the ability to actually find a solid initiation. If they pick off Aloha Dance at the start of those fights, you're going to end up seeing the fight end very quickly, I feel like, and not really close. Well, I don't know, the BKB up on the Doom as well, it's creating it's creating opportunities. Yes, it, the duration will go down. We're still looking at eight seconds, so it's not too bad for Silent just yet, but you get to that... 50 minute, 60 minute stage of the game, and with a 5 second BKB against a Venno AA in the late game, can be rough. Mm, but I, 
Hey, the answer you know, it's stealing that sleep, having an Ag Scepter, and just healing up your whole team. Oh, there we go. That's the one. That's what you want to do. <laughs> uh, well, it helps against the poison over. Unfortunately, n not the uh, Ice Blast, but certainly. Yeah. They're going to be going for Roche now. It does look like Empire know about this and are flirting with the idea of contesting, but they're not going to be able to be here in time. And Naga Lucian is just scattering the, yeah. the map everywhere. Oh, they actually, they're going to end up going in here. Disruptor picks up the, uh, the Aegis. Very interesting. I don't mind that too much. Oh, Resolution now. Going to be able to catch out on the puppy. He, he dies here. He's still coming back. That's going to be an A Blast on the two. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble now to the side. Song coming on out. Maybe it ends up getting stolen in a second. Resolution still taking some damage with the BKB on up. One more time again. Veno ulti comes out. Hitting onto everybody. Disruptor does end up falling, but he's coming back in a second. Loha Dance dropping low. Is going to be graved up. Maybe he makes a TP away. Meanwhile, Doom up in the top. Able to take out the Ancient Apparition. Veno taking on out the Night Stalker. Naga killing Rubik. It's all going down. Dazzle. Ah, oh, took out the Veno. Is Puppy going to fall? He does. Yoku! Going mad right now. We end up seeing the only two people left alive gems all over the ground. The Naga Siren and the Tusk. Yeah, Envy got doomed again. Does stay alive, but it just gives Empire such a good team fight when Naga can't use those illusions, Riptides and Snares to just add that little bit of extra control and firepower, so... Empire, hold on and... Oh? They're still looking like a big late game threat here. You see that, how these fights unravel, and this is before Rubik even has an Aghanim Scepter, so things could get even better for them when that item comes online. I will say now that the one thing that's kind of cool is that the Naga really hasn't, while well, she's the top of the net worth, like we've been talking about, the Gemma True site, not really going for items that are super much about fighting. Now she's picked up a Manta, she's getting a little bit more in those stats, 2,000 HP, has the ability to toss on a ton of illusions with the Octarine Core, so hard to push like they just took the mid tier one tower for empire so they have a lot of ways to go in terms of being able to claw their way back into this but it kind of is feeling like they end up winning one more big team fight they've got the potential to push down these towers pretty quickly yes and it all comes they've got the lineup where they're going to win the game by winning fights killing heroes not by just grouping up as five and pushing you'll never get a chance to push as five mm. into a naga with octarine mantis so empire are going to be prioritizing the team fight if you win the team fight, then you transition to that push, and they've got to keep the lanes pushed out. Because if they win a team fight on their side of the map, and all the lanes are pushing in, then they're like, "Well, we just killed three heroes, only lost one, but we can't really get anything out of it." So they want to try and keep the lanes pushed out while trying to find that opening to get a good engagement off. Not like. It and looks like Ember's not a bad hero for keeping lanes pushed as well, because he can just remnant around the place as long as he doesn't get caught by disruptor. This look like. Got the Deso picked up on the Tusk, the Shadow Blade as well. Aghanim Scepter up on the Disruptor. That's huge. That's going to be really, really big. The BKBs coming up suddenly become less important. Also, a little while ago, we saw Venno pick up the, the Sheep Stick. And with the Blink Dagger there as well, you got a pretty solid initiation if you end up finding that Ember Spirit. It's just going to be, can you actually find him? Veil Glimpse, Disruptor. And be okay. the Disruptor Ag Scepter even stronger because you've got the Naga Sleep setup. Often mm -hmm. the problem with the Ag's upgrade is you can't glimpse people and then disrupt ulti them because they'll just BKB the glimpse so you, you don't yeah. get the glimpse back. But with a song setup, you're guaranteed to land that silence on anyone who gets caught by the, the sleep from Jackie. So you leave with the song, follow up with the silence, and those heroes are not BKBing. That's what would have won them that fight in mid lane when Secret went for their push. If they had the Ag's there, it's like, well, Doom doesn't get off his BKB. Oh, here's the song initiation that we've been talking about. Puppy's at top though. He's not even he's not here. This is yeah, not the time for Seeker to fight. That was a little bit scary there. It looked like they were thinking about it at least, but seeing the rest of Empire nearby, like the, there's the tier three tower wall still far away was close enough to reinforce. And meanwhile, the tier one being down. Oh, might be able to find a misery ends up getting feared on up trying to chase here yet again. That's going to be oh my God. Resolution is going to fall really quickly here. Snowball in one more time. Static storm down as well. That's going to be that used though. So not going to be able to fight for a little bit while longer. And Rubik stole it also trying to continue to in continue this initiation. Doom BKB beat up. Oh, Did end up doing Jackie, no! Turn it around and one more time, not able to quite catch. Unfortunately, yeah. Misery does end up getting cleaned up by the Ember Spirit, and Doom kills the Ancient Apparition as well. So across the board, two more pickoffs there, just for the Night Stalker, trying to make the reinitiation happen. Weeha, just continuing <laughs> to mess with his Dazzle. Oh, God, and then running away yet again. Silent. Hot over here again. Doesn't have a BKB up for a little while. Looks like they're going to be fine. Dazzle in the fountain. He's trying to play the heal game against Poison. He will win. <laughs> oh, Puppy dropping really low, but they end up getting the Sheepstick off onto Silent. Blooped up by Rubik. 
bounce still he's just so freaking tanky right now even all the magic damage the veil on top of him he's regening through all of this another song just to secure their retreat but i don't know if they even needed that one necessarily most importantly he had a haste rune too against all those veno slows yeah finding a haste rune is one of the best things that can happen to empire at this stage of the game <laughs> They get out okay there. Venomancer re-engaging, didn't get anything out of the ult. He didn't lose his life there, but it just kind of continued the fight, which didn't seem to be working too well for them. And Disruptor just finding... Uh, well, Rubik, sorry, finding these big steals like the Disruptor Ultimate. Now holding on to the uh, Kinetic Field, which isn't the best. He'd rather have that disrup Disruptor ulti again, but wants to keep on stealing fights continuously in, a f in these engagements. And... Pyra slowly bouncing back. We're looking at an even game on the net worth chart. That is impressive re resilience coming out of Empire here. And pretty far ahead in terms of the EXP as well. It, right before that fight, Empire actually had an EXP lead going into it. So they've been able to really claw their way back into this game. And I'm wondering now, is the onus on Secret to try and make a move? Like, I don't really feel like... And they're smoking on up. It looks like they're going to be going for this pickoff. This is how it started last time, though. Resolution was able to tank through a lot of the damage. Is he going to be able to do the same yet again? Kinetic Field keeping him alive. There's the BKB. Does get ensnared. Another AA Blast coming out in just a second, and he ends up falling. Five men on top of you. You can't really do anything against that. Caught out a bit alone, and that's where not having a gem on Night Stalker means... Secret can get those engagements. All it takes is the Shadow Blade in. He's like, okay, I've got Night Vision. It's Darkness. Darkness is up. They're not going to get the jump on me, but Shadow Blade just providing what Secret needed. It does look like with Ember back up at the top lane, he's actually moving back again now. They're going to try and slow Siege down this tower a little bit, but they're not really... They're not losing anything by pushing these illusions on up into here, necessarily. They're just going to be able to consistently keep this pushed out. It does look like they're going to try and go for the high ground now. Silent in a little bit of trouble as well. Oh, Song maybe going to come out in a second. The Naga Siren was able to take down the tower, trying to create a little bit of separation here. They're going to be content with that. Maybe going to reinitiate in a second here? Oh, it's looking like they could. There's the initiation. Oh, Yoku. Uh -huh. Oh, no. There's going to be the Static Storm in just a second. Catch on to Dazzle as well. The steal of the song, though. Maybe a turnaround here. A Blast coming down as well. He's keeping he them alive. everyone. Oh, my God. No, it's not what you wanted to have happen. Now Puppy getting chased after yet again. BKB up on the Ember as well. Chasing after him one more time. That's going to be a kill. The Disruptor ends up going down. Actually, to the Radiant there. Trying to find another one if they possibly can. Ancient Apparition. Bopping low. He's going to end up falling as well. And they want more. Resolution's continuing to chase down here. Oh, the Gale's going to be able to keep him alive with the Blink Dagger, but my goodness gracious, how the heck did that happen? The Aloha. Song Steal. Aloha freaking dance. What a god. <laughs> I'm there like, oh, this is just the worst fight Empire could hope for, and then suddenly I hear the sleep time. I'm like, what? Rubik, you've done it? <laughs> with the AA thing, is, or with the, uh, the Aghanim Scepter upgrade as well, so he's getting all of the heal off on him throughout the whole course of that. Really, really well played there. Goodness that was gracious. just insane. That 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 would have been a game losing fight for Empire if not for that sleep steal. Oh man! And the other thing we talked about it there. They found the dazzle. They were able to find the Ember Spirit as well, but they couldn't find the Rubik. And this becomes, I think, probably one of the most important heroes for Ember at this point, considering you've got such a team fight advantage out of Secret. The ability to turn that back on their head is so important. So they need yep. to find him in these fights every time. And Jackie after that is just gonna be like. Holy shit, I just gotta, he's gonna, every time he uses sleep from now on, I bet he's gonna just immediately Riptide, just so it doesn't get stolen. <laughs> It'll be like, sleep Riptide, who cares if you hit nothing? Just make sure it does not get stolen, because that was just some game-winning stuff coming out from Aloha Dance, so. Well, the other thing, again, though, that makes it so difficult is that if you take a look at the range on the dis or the Ags oh, upgrade yeah. for the Rubik, while you can get it off, usually, in terms of being able to get the, the Riptide afterwards, he can stay way in the back of the fight, and if Venno tries to jump forward and get the Sheep off or potentially get the Poison Nova off, that's your Venomancer in the middle of the rest of the enemy team, and... Well, he still probably should be able to get his Poison Nova off. That, that's probably, I guess, the best answer, is to blink forward and try and sheep the Rubik. Nope. All these random gems just scattered around the map. <laughs> we had just, like, walks over one at the top river, like, oh, huh, where'd that come from? Pick up your trash. And just leaves it there. <laughs> so... Yeah, there's another one over here as well. What the heck? They're all throw thrown out all over there. Those are valuable, guys. You gotta go pick those up. Refresher up on Doom as well. A little bit of a pause coming out. I think it was a bit of server lag. I, I, I got a bit of spikes there. I'm not sure exactly.
Goodness gracious. What a game. It's been awesome so far. We've seen, what has this been? Uh, 62 kills in just about 47 minutes. A lot of action. And usually that's not something that you end up seeing, I feel like, with a Naga Siren game. And I think that probably Empire, just based upon their team picks, ended up going for this, wanting to get up in their grill and, and make it happen. And just very unpredictable fights. Like Nothing's really gone according to how you'd expect it to as far as the overall script for the two teams. Normally... The early game was so good for Secret, you think, okay, they've just won the early game, this Radiance is coming up for a Naga, this game should be in the bag because there's so much room and space for for Envy. Like, he's just going to get this Radiance, they're going to split push and just take control of the map. But And the, the other thing is they immediately lost the gem on the side of Empire when they when they killed off the Night Stalker. So I was just like, okay, <laughs> Radiance is here, Octarine Corp, Boots of Travel, they've lost their gem, Secret have got this, but... Empire is showing that the late game power of not just their cores in the Doom and the Ember, but a hero like Rubik can match up against Secret. Well, and I think that one team fight at the tier three mid for uh, for the Radiant, where they ended up revealing the BKB from Doom, and he ended up just getting like two or three oh, yeah. kills right there. It yeah. was so huge. The ability to hide that until the last second and then toss it on out there really made that team fight turn around for them. And I felt like that was the turning point. There, sort of like, all right. Big boy boots time. Let's throw them on. Start making this happen. Um, and we're able to, to really bring it out. And now you're looking at a situation where you've got, you know, the net worth lead going into Empire's favor. You've got a huge EXP lead, 10,000 gold. Items across the board are starting to get picked up that are really high impact. And while Naga Siren is always going to be able to keep those lanes consistently pushed on out, it still becomes a problem in terms of actually fighting. And while the Diff Blade is great, the Octarine is great, the Radiance is great, I kind of feel like she needs to be able to actually have a presence in this, these team fights beyond just the song. And we'll see how she ends up going for that, maybe. Yeah. And it seems in a team fight, if you're trying to use your illusions and just like put them all on someone, that's where the ember will just cleave through them. So in a team fight setting, it's, it can see why it is tough for Envy to have an impact outside of the song. Totally. But the way this game is going is it's. It seems more team fight centric than split push centric. You can't just have Envy split pushing the map when you're trying to group up and use that AoE wombo combo that Secret have. The Disruptor Silence, the Ice Blast, the Poison Nova, these big team fight high impact spells just can't really be used to their full effect if Envy's trying to split push only. Well, and he's been able to consistently keep the lanes pushed out. Like, he's been doing it the the best job that you can imagine. Like, all of the lanes have consistently been pushed out. And that's sort of evident by the fact that we still have a Tier 2 tower that's going on in the bot lane. Like, he's been able to keep them off the towers, been able to keep them off the Tier 3s, despite the fact that Empire has been able to win these team fights because the lanes have been pushed out. You know, there's a couple of team fights that happened in the mid lane where they weren't able to make as much happen because bot was pushed into the tower you end up running into the situations, well, it does help. You kind of feel like there just needs to be that one last little oomph. And maybe it's just a solid initiation by Secret and being yeah. able to find those key heroes that they need. And maybe they actually don't need anything else on the Naga. Well, um, just a solid initiation. There's been also some really big key pickups now that we're looking at it. Silent has a refresher all for the upcoming fight on Doom. The other item which could cause some problems, though, for Silent is this Lotus pickup for Weeha. So the Lotus is one of those... Even if you're not getting, even if you're not echoing the doom, like you put that on your front liner, that five second window where they cannot be doomed, so they can put themselves in a position where they're, quote unquote, out of position. But because of the Lotus Orb, he's not going to get doomed up. He's not going to get initiated on by a telekinesis, whatever it may be. So, some potentially high impact items. A ideal scenario is you are echo echoing off the doom right back onto him, but even just keeping someone alive for that little five second window by not having them get doomed can pay off. Certainly. And we, we talked a lot about also here the drafts and the, the relative strengths and weaknesses of it. One thing that I don't think we touched on here for Secret is you mentioned the, the head frontliner. They have Tusk, they have to some extent the Naga Siren Illusions, but they don't have like that Shadow Fiend or that Viper or the Razor. Somebody can just stand up on the high ground and continue to hit away at those towers. It's, it's hard to be able to have somebody just stand up there and not get completely and totally demolished. Yeah. So I think that pro we saw in the mid tower, they threw the Illusions on there, but they were able to get pretty, clear, pretty quickly cleaved up by the Ember. So I'm wondering if they're going to opt to do that again, maybe just send in the Naga Siren Illusions one by one and have that type of uh, ability to slow siege down these barracks. But they need something like that, something, some type of oomph. And... It's definitely one of the key weaknesses in this secret draft is they're actually not that good at breaking high ground. As annoying as a Naga can be split pushing, they haven't, yeah, they just haven't got that hero to break through, take a lane of racks, and... 
They also haven't got that defensive thought to just sit behind and keep them alive. Like, you look at the side of Empire where you can just constantly grave or shadow wave them. You pop the we Weave is another big spell, which going into the late game can have a pretty big impact without even noticing it directly. And yeah. that's where Empire, I feel like, do have the lineup to take this. They're actually... I mean, they've called their way back into a lead, if anything. So, Secret... And secret not really going anywhere. You've got a six-slotted Naga. You've still got the gem which you can replace, but Naga doesn't get that much scarier beyond this point. You can get that extra item to give you that more teamfight kind of carry build, but you're still not going to see a huge upgrade in how Naga stacks up against a Doom especially. You get Doomed, you're out of the fight. Totally. And that's where any item Envy gets. If he's getting Doomed, which seems to be the case every single time, it doesn't really matter. Well, and the other thing here, you know, after the little pause, they end up going back in and wanting to do a little smoke up. You end up looking at this. I still feel like while Empire has been able to work their way into a lead, there's going to be, I think, a lot of team fights still won by Secret if they take them outside of the base. And it looks like this might be Bruin right here as well. Dazzle's a little bit caught up to the side, but Rubik isn't in the fight. This might end up being a little bit of a problem there. Ancient Apparition immediately taking down the Dazzle, but do they have the possibility to take more? Jumping forward, Silent is BK beat up. Doom on top of Puppy. There is going to be the song. He doesn't even care about that. Puppy's going to end up falling here as well. Doom ends up taking him out with the Doom. Can they catch up to Envy? That's the key here. They want to kill him during this Axe Doom and... Silent getting slowed down by all these poisons. God, it's so gonna be close. Threading. It looks like he should be able to make his way Dude's out. Up. He cut him. Jumps forward. Is gonna be able to get the kill there. No, no type of resolution there for Envy. Um, he's gonna end up getting taken out. Goodness gracious! Not what you want to have happen. Silent played that fight so well. He blink engages. Dooms the disruptor. So no eggs. Silence coming out. Immediately refreshes, gets a double shivers off, casts his second BKB so the Naga sleep doesn't catch him, and then gets the Doom off on Envy as well. So it was just perfect play from Silent. Everything was just calculated. He got the refresher onto every single item and spell of his, and just, yeah, Empire looking strong here. They are in a little bit of, oh my god, blink dodges. A little bit of sixth sense. Spidey sense is working out for Silent he, there. Gonna he had no way. gem detection. <laughs> that was just... <laughs> <laughs> that was pure spidey senses. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be going on and taking Roche there. And that's something as well, that the fact that he's got all of these castable items, they do actually end up spotting off to the side here, the Ancient Apparition. I think that Secret know this is going on, but with no potential for a song initiation, it becomes a little bit difficult. And Night Stalker Vision is just king at this stage. Oh god, there's the Poison Nova off onto everybody. He's going to end up falling so quickly, though. Lotus Orb on top of him, it doesn't matter. Right clicks abound. Jump forward as well, going to be able to catch on to Puppy. He's in trouble as well, getting hit with the level death. Maybe going to be able to make his way away. There's the A Blast coming in. Going to hit onto two. Are they going to be able to make it happen, though? And it looks like they were actually able to fight off Empire from killing off their buddy, oh, Mr. Ancient Apparition and Puppy. Bit of an early grave, and I think Resolution will go down here. Yeah. Oh, if he grieved no. later, I think... He would have survived, but not everything. That was just like a suicidal initiation from Weeha, though. He must have known, like, blinking into the pit with Poison Nova, that he was never going to survive that one. And unfortunately, the Ice Blast wasn't ready. It, was, it didn't come until later as a follow-up. Yeah, I think that they were just concerned about how long it was before Roche was going to go down and yep. if they were going to be able to take the fight, I would imagine. But a little bit of potential miscommunication there, maybe. Uh, not really. It, it, and it, like, how big is that Aegis at this point in time in this game? For here, like Ember, I think it's pretty important because it gives him that breathing room where if he gets caught out by a sleep silence. You look at that mid fight. He only survived an Empire win that fight because of a sick play from Aloha Dance. You can't rely on sleep getting stolen when mm. it happened once especially. It's very unlikely to happen a second time because Envy will be ready for it and will be insta-casting a spell next time he uses sleep. So there's a very good chance Yoku could get caught out by a sleep into a silence combo, not get a chance to BKB and go down. And that's where Aegis on Ember Spirit I think is going to give Empire like a five minute window now where they can play much more aggressively. Certainly. It is worth noting that uh, we do see the Scotty picked up for uh, the Naga Siren here. So starting yeah. to get a little bit more tanky, starting to get a little bit more damage. Also, an MKB is up on the Ember Spirit. So he's going to be able to hit on through that 17% that can completely and totally mess up your day, that Radiance Burn. And I think that those are pretty solid pickups there. I really like the Scotty because it means that illusions are going to be hitting a little bit harder. The trade-off, obviously, is that they don't stay alive as long as if you now end up going for something like a heart. Do you, yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, the Butterfly no longer an option because of MKB. And yeah, it's either the heart or the Scotty. And 
I think I prefer the Scotty because it's a bit more well-rounded. You get the stats, so you have more agi, you get more armor, you get more attack speed. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the illusions hitting harder, so Hot is purely defensive HP for your illusions, whereas Scotty is a bit more well-rounded. And if you're not fighting with illusions, which could often happen because of Ember clearing them out, having a Scotty slow just is more annoying slows for these BKB heroes to deal with on the side of Empire. Certainly. It does look like they're sort of trading places a little bit here. Uh, the smoke coming on over out from Empire, moving up to the mid lane and over towards the jungle as well, but looks like they're going to be okay. Pushing out over here to the side is secret. They're trying to maybe force a fight. We do see Misery off to the side. He's actually spotted out by this ward, I believe. They're pinging him out there. Oh, weave down on top of three. Puppy taking a little bit of damage. BKB popped as well. World's Punch on to the Dazzle in the back of it. Doom is in the middle of all this as well. Song of Siren not going to be able to be enough. That is double Doom on the two heroes. They're in some trouble right now. Do end up getting caught off to the side. Weeha's going to end up falling. This looks like Naga's going to be dead as well. And a huge, huge team fight going the way of Empire. Resolution is going to maybe fall for this as well. No, ends up staying alive with the cheese. Oh, goodness gracious. This is not what you want to have happen at all. Misery trying to make his way away, but the rest of his team is Water dead. Backs. What's happening? Oh. I don't know what happened down there, but it's like at least a range rack's going down. And it's gracious. Oh my god, and that and is a 5,000 gold swing into their favor on top of being able to push through mid now. Envy actually didn't have buyback until that racks went down. <laughs> uh, that was the crazy thing as well. He was about 50 gold short, so he may have had it by the time they reached high ground, but that Rex gave him the guaranteed buyback. Double buyback now, but none on the Naga. Do you try and force this? Um, well, I think you want to try and force the Naga and ideally the Venner to buy back as well. And what Secret are going to look to do is engage with Disruptor or Tusk before they buy back. And there we go. A blast coming out. Might be able to catch somebody. Rubik falls at the very beginning of this fight. This actually might be pretty bad here. Yoku is BKB'd up as well as the Doom. He ends up getting caught though. Going to be able to TP away after the Ensnare ends up hitting. Ember Spirit kills the Disruptor as it mentioned. And it looks like No Fear is going to be able to make his way away as well. Song coming out. Maybe going to be able to catch here. Actually A ended up taking down Silent as well. Grave coming out. He is taking the DOT though. There's no way he gets out of this one. Is Unless the Jukes are freaking real. No, they, just, they got the Sigil over him. It's going to be a dead. So it was quad buybacks and they get full kills out of it. They can go back the other way and force Empire to now buy back. Which is where, yeah, that's definitely the right play for Secret. They engage and then use the buybacks as they force the fight. So Empire already committed. They've used their BKBs. They're already too deep in the enemy base. So they're forced to fight and suddenly there's two extra buybacks from a Veno and a Naga catching him by surprise. And four buybacks sounds like, eh, is that really worth it? But it's going to be not just getting the kills, but forcing out Empire buybacks. Flash taking the lane of Rax. This bottom melee Rax is completely exposed and already down to half HP. Yeah, those illusions are hitting so hard with that Scotty on up on her. And I think that now at this point in time, they're, they're going to be able to take this one pretty convincingly. They're trying to try and clear it out with the Ember Spirit, mm. able to get away from that one before it ends up falling. They do miss the mid-range back barracks. And I think that Misery's sticking around a little bit longer. They're going to try and take this one. They're scared of buybacks, but there aren't any. Oh my god, that damage coming out from the Ember Spirit is so severe on a Misery. This is going to be a dead melee barracks as well, so they take a lane. Maybe going to try and force a little bit more. With only a couple seconds left, I think they need they to get out of here. alive at least. Yeah. Surprisingly, Yoku picked up another Battle Fury. Great against all the illusions when you're cleaving off of them, but it very much felt like he could pick up a Rapier at this point. He had that last item slot, and I'm looking at it. He had 8,000 gold. I'm just like, okay, Rapier plus buyback could be a possibility, but... The safer option being the Battle Fury, and the option that's really good against the illusions of Naga. Well, and I'm wondering, did he pick that up right before he ended up coming back into the fight as well? Yes. So I, I think I, he probably wanted a little bit of extra damage, like, immediately. Yeah, before. yeah. And the courier couldn't really get to the secret shop, so it's very much a convenient item that you can fully purchase from the, the comfort of your own base. Right. Very, very interesting pickup so far across the board. Dazzle also with the Aghanim Scepter. Um, not something that you always see, but can come up from time to time, getting the extra little bit of armor that it ends up giving, as well as the extra uh, range on it, so you're going to be able to hit more heroes, which I think is probably the bigger component of it, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. A lot of sort of teamfighty things going on across <laughs> the board. We're just continuing to see this. and. The main way that these racks have been able to go down, the pushes have been able to ensue, has been by virtue of the team fights going the way of one team or the other, and then really pressuring after the fact. Neither team can just go for a push and expect to see any results whatsoever. Yeah, it's always going to be team fight, and then whoever wins the team fight taking taking buildings. And for Empire, losing that mid lane of racks and a range racks bottom, 
I don't feel like it hurts them too hard. They're at a stage of the game where having the decreased income from killing creeps isn't going to matter. They've got most of their big items that they need to be a late game threat. Your Ember as well as Doom are both six slotted. Night Stalk is just going for your value, Vlad's at this stage. So they've got all the items they need. They also have great heroes for keeping lanes pushed out. They've been dealing with a Naga all game, so it's not really any different dealing with a Naga versus dealing with super creeps. It's right. Both are annoying, so... They've got the ability to just keep on taking this game into the late game, as we've seen throughout. It's still looking very balanced between the two teams, despite the Rax is being claimed. And all it takes is Empire to win a fight right now, and Secret buybacks on four heroes on cooldown. So yeah. this is a very volatile two to three minutes for Secret, where they are just going to stay huddled up in their own base and not look to move anywhere on the map. Well, and you mentioned that you didn't think any team could try and really uh, force a, a team fight or anything like that. They couldn't go as, as five and try and push down a lane of racks. I kind of feel like at this point, Empire needs to do some type of pressure, so apply some type of fight, because you mentioned in a couple of minutes here, it's going to be Secret that have the buybacks, and then Empire is going to have the one or two that they no longer have on the, the other heroes. Yeah. They Wait, did they buy back on anybody? They bought back on no one? They didn't buy back. Wow. They ha they two heroes didn't have buyback. I think it was okay. only the Doom who had buyback, okay. and Rubik and Night Stalker didn't. I want to say Ember was alive the whole time, didn't need to use his. Yeah, interesting. I totally thought that one of them was going to have to buy back, but I, I guess it didn't end up happening. Really helpful then. So they definitely want to pressure now if they possibly can, because they have them and uh, the rest of the enemy team does not. Uh, particularly Ember Spirit, I feel like, is such a, a great hero for being able to have that, because if you toss out a remnant beforehand, you buy back, you get right back into the fight. It's really great. And that's where a team fight right now it could effectively be a 7v5, 8v5 kind of scenario. So... Secret should be looking, at, by all means, to avoid any potential conflict, and Roshan respawning in 15 could be nice for like some of these key supports. We saw Disruptor take an Aegis earlier, and I feel Rubik would actually be the Aegis carry if Empire could grab an Aegis, okay. uh, if not just a cheese. But keeping Dazzle and Rubik alive is very important, because if that hero gets jumped like a Dazzle, that's suddenly no more grave in that teamfight, so... The consistent split push right here is so great out of this Naga Siren. Yeah. They're knocking on the front door and immediately have to go on back to try and heal on up and make sure they're in the correct position. And now you're going to be able to see the mid lane get pushed out so, so hard to be able to push against this Naga Siren. And they need to take a team fight, and Seeker just aren't going to let it happen. While you do have the vision advantage coming out from the Night Stalker, and you do have you know the ability to take those team fights that you want during the night time, you've still got the problem that... Secret's going to be able to disengage a lot of the time with songs. They're going to be able to uh, just keep their heroes spread around the map. Because even if you end up losing one hero on Secret, I feel like right now, they're still going to be in an okay position to be able to uh, defend still. Going for Roshan now as well. Ready for a little bit of action coming out. Yeah, so we'll see. We talked about em Empire, who they want to give it to. I think Secret's a similar story where it's more likely to be some of the supports and utility heroes. Tusk could take... eight. Probably the Aegis, I guess Cheese is also possible. Ooh, Song is out now. It's going to catch on to Resolution. It may have been too early. Roshan's oh. not that low. Oh, Rubik stole it as well. They're going to try and force this one if they possibly can. That's going to be Jackie getting caught out to the side. There's going to be a couple pollutions out. A Blast coming as well. Going to be able to be dodged, I believe. No, not dodged by the Ember Spirit. Continuing to chase Doom down on top as well. Naga Siren's going to end up falling. Ember Spirit gets the last hit now. Maybe going to be able to have more? No, just going to have to back out. And that is a huge kill. No buyback uh, for it's only just three seconds. Up, yeah. All four of those buybacks which were used have just come back online, which is where Secret did risk a Roshan because they knew if it went badly, they buy back. Uh, here we go. Puppy lays down the kinetic field onto a couple there as well. Static Storm coming down. Jackie falling low though, ends up getting taken out by the Doom. So frustrating. Aegis gets picked up by the Venomancer. Uh, no. By the Night Stalker, excuse me. Ember's buying back. They want to end this game. Coming out again. Aegis is popped by the Night Stalker. They might be looking for a little bit more here yet again. Couple of buybacks. Venom doesn't have his though. It just came back up and he's 300 gold short. If Venno had buyback, I, like you could be looking at potential for a, a decent ra Rax hold. There's still a long way to push these creep waves. That's where Silent just TP back. I'm like, wait, Silent, why are you TPing away from the tier 3 tower back to your own base? I'm like, oh, there's a creep wave knocking at their mid lane of Rax slash tier 4 tower. So and they're going to push this one. out. 
Yeah. Oh, there's the rapier. We're doing it. Yep. It's time, boys. All right, they're up Love on the it. high ground now. No boots, Dota. <laughs> <laughs> he boots. moves so... Nice Vortex! <laughs> 217 <laughs> movement speed in the Nice Vortex! Oh, God. Are that's... they straight for the throne here, or do they stop by and take the racks? I think they could go whichever way that they want. Dodging away from that Ice Blast as well. I, I kind of feel like... Maybe they just go straight right, throne. Yeah. They're going for it. Why not? Gonna be able to steal that ice vortex one more time again. We're gonna bring your movement speed down. Buyback's coming out by the disruptor. Do they have enough to hold with the rapier up on the ember? That's so much damage on top of that ancient apparition. Lift up one time onto the disruptor. He's gonna get snowballed up though to keep him alive a little bit longer. Resolution continuing to push forward here. That is going to be so much damage. Tusk takes down the Rubik in the we end. We has though. back though. They took the butt racks, which gave him buyback money again. Oh god, that racks may have just kept secret in the game. Oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, if they my knew that Weha had no buyback because of that melee Rax, then they would just be kicking themselves like, oh my gosh. Like, that was... They could have guaranteed mid and top Rax if they wanted to. It was at least two lanes of Rax. And instead, just a tier 3 and a tier 4 tower. Man, that is crazy. That was so close to them winning the game. I don't know if Venno, Venno alone not having buyback was going to mean the game was over. They could have defended without him potentially because it took Empire a long time to reach the base because they had to push the creep waves across the map. Yeah. But was definitely given, gave Secret that just self of, that, that self confidence they needed to say, okay, we've definitely got this hold and Empire back off. And that's when you get these pickoffs. That's where you get the glimpse back on the Night Stalker. You find that extra kill or two. And in this game, still very much up in the air. I don't think y Yoku can go bootsless entirely. He's just too slow against Venomancer slows, Ice Vortex. There we go. He drops a battle fury, picks up some brown boots, and I think we will be seeing a boots of travel once again when he can afford it. That makes sense. It's it's so hard to, like, he's already moving so slow with all those slows, as yeah. you mentioned. And while he does have a heck of a lot of damage coming out, the remnant speed depends upon his own speed, so you're ending up running into trouble. Battle fury going to be picked up uh, by the Doom. Yeah, that's... I guess to clear creep waves? Clear creep waves and clear Naga illusions. He hits pretty damn hard right now with the critical strike as well. I wonder if he just has this in like his inventory and I think then he it out. Well, he swaps out the refresher and like tries to keep mm -hmm. the... He does need the instant refresher. Like you want to be able to instantly refresh after Doom to get a new BKB shivers and a second Doom. So it's... I think it's an item he'll put on himself when the refresh is on cooldown because yeah. trying to swap out a refresher mid team fight could lose you a game if you somehow fumble it or you're half a second too slow. Well, and the other thing here as well that he could potentially do is when you end up having a big push up towards maybe the mid lane, you toss on out the, you know, you get in your fight, you toss out the Doom, and then you TP back to base, swap them out, and then push out the lanes with yep. that, keep them off of your tier four. So it doesn't even need to have them in the team fight at all, I, I think. Not even on the courier probably. Well, never mind. He's just going for it right now. Yeah. Sort of. See him. I don't think this will be like a permanent thing. He's very much clearing out the creep waves. They're not expecting Secret to push while Naga's buyback is on cooldown, which is still for another three minutes, so Empire probably don't feel any sense of threat coming their way, apart from creeps and illusions. Hmm. But he will need that refresher back for a team fight, guaranteed. So who do you think is the most high priority target for the refresher here? Does it depend upon which skills have already been cast, or is there always an option? It depends a lot on positioning of the heroes as well. Disruptor is, to me, one of the Radiant core heroes. The pre-Static Storm, dooming a Disruptor is fine, and then I think the second Doom you want to be on, Envy, which has been majority of the fights for the past 20 minutes. It's been Envy plus one, and often that plus one is Disruptor. It's worth dooming the Venomancer if you can get him outside of Lotus Orb and when he hasn't cast Poison Nova, but that, to me, is just unlikely because Venno is always blinking and starting the fight, and then there's not really much point to dooming him, but... Yeah. I think it's more a positional thing than like a there's a must doom target outside of the Naga. The Naga to me is the only must doom target in a fight. Interesting. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like. Oh, well, let's see another jump forward now. They're not going to be doing it. They're just continuing to push out these creep waves here. I I don't really know because the other thing that I'm wondering about here as well is with the Venomancer having the blink dagger, being able to have the hex up as well. There, if it's worth being able to jump forward and catch onto the Doom and potentially lose your life afterwards, it seems like it could be worth it if you get that Poison Nova off. Doesn't that buyback is where it's a yeah. bit risky? He'll be farming it, so two and a half minutes from now, 
looking at like a normal fight where both teams have buybacks, have all their core items, there's no buybacks on cooldown, I think it is worth it for Weeha to kind of suicide himself onto the Doom. The main thing is you want to make sure you kill him, which means Poison Nova alone is not going to be enough. You need to right. combo it with an Ice Blast and potentially even Tusk engaging as well. Misery on this Tusk is doing a lot of damage at this stage. He's not only got the Shadow Blade Deso, but his an AC mm. has 4.3k gold. Is very much playing that kind of carry-oriented Tusk this game. They see the smoke on up, I think, and they're all running on back. They don't oh, they, want any part okay, of this. Okay, they did scatter. That's. I was, I was say, I'm surprised to see like smokes. 70 minutes in, the smokes are so rare, and this doesn't look like it's smoke that's going to achieve too much. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that it's not going to end up working catch, out. They make it Vision of Misery. It looks like they have seen him. Do they have enough to take him down? I guess with the Rubik here as well. They can silence him. He can't cast anything. Oh, that's going to actually be able to potentially be a kill here. Do we GP have the rotations? Well. Oh, God, yeah. The Boots of Travel level 2 coming on in. This is actually starting a team fight here in the middle of everything. Static Storm down on top of 2. Is he going to be able to continue this? Doomed onto the Venomancer. Just continuing to chase here. Nice glimpse on back, though. And the Naga Siren ends up taking out the Rubik off to the side as well. Oh, Doom catching a little bit low with the Naga here as well. And Snare comes down one more time. That's a lot of damage coming out. And Naga doesn't even even have to show herself at this point. That's going to be a snowball in, taking a lot of damage, and Doom is going to end up falling. Oh, the sleep canceled the TP from Dazzle as well. This is going to be another one. Catches their Walrus Punch down one more time again. Tusk oh. taking down the Dazzle. That is huge right now. And buybacks, not really on the radar at this point. The Night Stalker has one, as does the Doom, but we're not going to have the Rubik, which is so key in these engagements. Yeah, and already down two lanes of racks means... For Secret, it's they haven't won this game until they've got Mega Creeps. It's still game on until that happens. And one buyback comes out. That's silent. Refresher Orb is still there for him. He needs to be picking this one up. I think he needs both Dooms in a team fight. One for Envy, one for someone else, because otherwise... It's just not going to be enough firepower coming out of Team Empire. I, I, I'm wondering if they're... I guess that they're just waiting for this next set of creep waves here, but they really want to be able to take advantage of this moment, I feel like. And yeah. I guess with Doom already buying back, maybe they're content to leave it at this, but... That was just such a crazy team fight too, because it was a 2v1 that turned into like a 4v4 <laughs> because of the level 2 Boots of Travels. I've never actually seen that happen, where a two-man smoke gank turned into a 4v4 team fight when they only found one hero. New mechanics, yo. Resolution now as well is going to end up coming in here. The TP away. Rat Dota. Oh god, he, jumping forward. It's the sleep to... He's sleeping up here as well, going for the top tier 3 tower in Rax. Jeez. They're resorting to the uh, the classic Alliance style <laughs> plays. I like it. It's We're awesome. seeing everything come out from Secret here to try and win this game. It's so hard with the ability to not really push high ground. And like we've mentioned, the fact that they've got all of this wave clear here out of Empire, it becomes so difficult to really yeah. do anything. And the only way to do it is winning team fights. But then you got buybacks and then team fights more. And it, they're avoiding fights because nobody has buyback. And it's so hard to pressure it and really take advantage of it. And the fact of the matter is that everybody is so far farmed right now that there's not really a huge advantage either yep. way, I think. Yeah. The the beauty of this is they can keep chipping away at the base, which is where the T3 tower now just gets denied, just blocking away a little bit of gold that would have gone the way of the Naga illusions. And I think we'll keep seeing Secret try and employ this tactic where Naga just tries to sleep a few heroes while the illusions are split pushing top. You can never just group up as five and try and fight Empire head on at the top lane. It's always going to be the illusions pushing unless you've won a fight, taken some of them, some of the Empire side out already before that. Do you think that Mega Creeps even necessarily means the game's I... over? Not 100%, but 90, 95% over. Okay. Empire have got embers. They can definitely defend Mega Creeps, but it just means are you actually playing to win the game or are you just playing to stall the game? And to me, it's very much, it turns into a stalling game at that point. Right. This, like, the 90, 800, 100 plus minute game, Naga Siren is not actually, doesn't actually fight that well, can't actually finish off the game, even when you have got Mega Creeps against a hero like an Ember Spirit. Um, but. I just feel like across the board, here is like Night Stalker falling off. I was just about to say, Resolution with 5k gold, get a Mjolnir or get a Maelstrom just to clear out these creeps, illusions. Yeah. That was the item I thought Silent might get instead of the Battle Fury. It just kind of functions a bit better as far as dealing with big waves at this stage of the game. But um, it's going to be the Maelstrom on Night Stalker and then the Battle Fury on the Doom to deal with the creep waves, deal with the Naga illusions.
and just completely and totally encapsulated in their base at this point in time. So hard to find anything. You take a look at their vision. While they do have the one up by the Ancients, the vision comparison is just completely and totally ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but, look at Naga's stash, by the way. Oh, you, you just, is that what you're laughing at? Yeah, it's it's craziness. <laughs> I don't know what the heck is going on here. Let's see the 20th Century Awards. Why not? <laughs> oh, we uh, in a little bit of trouble. Does actually turn off the sheep stick. Resolution getting it. He, he's got allies coming in, though. They might be able to make something happen to this. BKB is popping out for the Night Stalker. Just trying to make his escape a little bit. The Ember Sphere just does so much damage to those creep waves. Clearing them out with the quickness. Wallace Punch down on top of the Night Stalker. There's the Lincoln's Orb being revealed. It looks like Resolution's actually going to go down here. The Thunder Strike, too much damage for them. Nagasaren ends up getting the last hit. And maybe they try and push for this one. There's certainly an opportunity so to. Can Pi sell these Sentry Wards now? Because he, he comboed it with an Observer Ward of his own. Is this like a way to pull gold to your teammate? Oh. Or is he just going to spam Sentries? I think that probably just going to spam Sentries. He planted one Sentry, planted the Orbs. Is he going to now sell this? Well, I'm curious. the top barracks are going down, so yeah. I think that they're in a pretty good spot well, regardless. You asked the question, can they beat Mega Creeps? So we're about to find out. Yeah, definitely. Doom on top of Venno. Shiva's guard up as well. He's going to get chased on down here. Completely eviscerated. Ember Spirit gets the last hit. Meanwhile, trying to TP away is going to be, I believe that was the Tusk. Yes, going to make his way out of there. And now a whole nother battle comes on. This is a PvE officially. Well, Pilot Eye about to pick up a refresher potentially. He's got 5.2k gold and seems like a, the ideal item to have. Although I guess m maybe wants to consider buyback himself. Well, I I don't know what happens from here on out. It, it, it's still going to be Empire hold up in their own base. For Secret, they the, the way they lose this game is by trying to push and dying, buying back, dying again. So the problem we reach is it's kind of a stalemate where Secret don't really want to push because that's going to be the way they lose the game, but they also know they Empire are just going to stay in their own base themselves. So they can take Roshan, they can take map control, and they're going to look for like a pick-off and jump somewhere on the map. For Naga Siren, can you just every 45 seconds split up your illusions, toss them in there, song, and then put them on this tier 4? Like, is yep. that the answer here? definitely a possibility it's a lot harder to do compared to the racks because the base for empire now is just the tier 4 towers on the throne that's the only right. point where they have to defend in the past they had to defend the tier 4 towers and the top lane of racks so there was a much bigger distance between these two defense points now it's just entirely centered around the throne so as long as empire's heroes at the throne if they're being slept, then the buildings are invulnerable. You can't use those kind of tactics empire are defending at their throne you can use it if they're defending away from the throne which potentially happen because Empire at some point will need to push out these lanes lanes and try and take some kind of a fight I we may see another two hero smoke and then use the level two boots of travel to engage that that seems like the only real play for Empire got a smoke on dazzle have dazzle night stalker smoke up and everyone else just TP in yeah certainly I, I I think right now though it feels to me almost and they are gonna send those illusions but Ember clears them so quickly it seems to me almost like the only play at this point for Empire is not oh, even to push out the other there's... lanes, but just to try and push out. Okay, Silent picked up a Shadow Blade. He knows there's no gem, but there is 20 sentries on AA, so... Oh, they end up catching him out, I guess. Oh, he's in... He would be in trouble if there was any follow-up, but not the case. He's gonna back on out here. I, I feel like Empire don't even need to try and deal with the bottom and top lane at all. They just kind of go for... Oh, maybe actually gonna find the initiation. Walrus Punch on the Doom gonna be able to create a little bit of separation now Lincoln's popped for misery I feel like it's thrown or bust at this point like they yeah and like, they can't just go for the throne until they win a team fight which secret of being so cautious about they're just not gonna give that opportunity to Empire right now well I slowly picking away at the enemy team Aloha dance trying to find somebody or staff everything tossed out oh misery as well is gonna end up trying to get a little bit of separation catches as well on the silent he's taking a lot of damage and snares keeping him exactly where he wants to be, not be I should say uh, and now the Lincoln's ex as well the Lotus orb turning around yet again silent taking a lot of damage might end up falling here walrus punch down staying alive oh static storm on to three Aegis is finally popped now there's a song coming out Rubik is off to the side as well he was able to toss out his own silence 
somehow still alive at the end of all of this, able to steal the song yet again. The Rubik is Walrus Punch onto Resolution, trying to turn this one back around. Nobody has died in this fight yet. <laughs> what the heck is going on? The heel is coming out though. They're going to be able to take this one, I think. Oh no, they don't want to be able to fight it. Resolution getting sheeped up. Is another kinetic field drop down? Lotus Orb down for Misery. Doomed up <laughs> Jackie, trying to create a little bit of separation. And meanwhile, the tier fours have fallen down completely and totally. Tusk takes out the Night Stalker. I feel like I was watching Blackhawk down and they were just doing everything they could to save Doom there. It's like Doom is 10 HP, they Static Storm, they sleep, there's another sleep, there's two graves in one fight, everything just to keep the Doom alive and unfortunately a lot of people die to save that Doom in the in this game. Doomed up puppy, falling low, Ember Spirit kills him off with that massive, massive AoE and it looks like this might be close to the end here for Empire. Silent getting graved up, but uh, Misery falling as low. This Ember Spirit does so much damage, able to take down Weeha as well. Another song coming out, trying to keep his buddies alive as long as possible while Dusk finally kills off the Doom. Private Ryan has been killed. The Ancient is starting to take a lot of damage and they're doing everything they can to keep him off of it. This is feeling like it's a losing battle that they're fighting at this point in time. Yes. It's it seems like we're at the end. Doom without buyback, same for the Rubik. Knight's looking buyback, but he's just not able to, to fight without that Doom on the front lines. And Secret holding on to their buyback here. They could just throw him out and then launch themselves at this throne, but I think they want to just play things a bit more cautiously. They can feel they've won this game, and they know the only possible way they could theoretically let it slip is just by dying back and not having uh, the, the, yeah, not having those buybacks to, to work around. There's Yoku, he there. falls. He buys back to the game That's now. a rapey on the ground. Misery, come on dude, style point. <laughs> there we go. Nicely done. Always good to have a rapier just laying around the ground. We've been having trash all over the place. The gems all over and now the rapiers as well. Um, just It's looking a little bit too bad. Empire, it, I feel like this draft, what do you think was the real cause of the, the sort of inevitable downfall here? So they had a really strong mid game where they turned things around with the B with the BKBs. It very much felt like Secret figured out how to just kite around it a lot better. They didn't try and fight into the BKBs as much, and also those BKB durations came just got whittled away. We're looking at these five second BKBs for the last 20 minutes, and in a late game setting against AA and Venno, five second BKB just doesn't cut it. There we go. One last little engagement here. Yoku is BK beat up, staying alive a little bit longer. Might be able to just turn around and take the rack. That's actually Rapier on the ground yet again. A couple of Static Storms caught off as well as the Venno ulti coming out. Tusk buying back into the game. Wants to get back into the fray as quickly as possible, but they're just going to turn. Axe. They have enough. Secret end up taking game one. Whew. That was game one? <laughs> I thought that was like the full best of three series. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was quite a game, definitely. Really, really solid. Oh man, that was, yeah, that was a very...